Welcome back to Better Than It Was and my Pipe Clamp 101 class. As a relatively new woodworker myself, anytime I wanted to learn something about woodworking, I would jump on YouTube and try to search for the topic. While I found a number of general videos on types of clamps, I never found a detailed video on why anyone in their right mind would use this turn-of-the-century clamp in modern woodworking. Hint, I found out why, and I'll show you throughout the video. I mean really, with all the modern aluminum thingamajigs and doohickeys, why would anyone want to use a pipe clamp? I mean, it's so old and clunky looking. Well, I'm here to tell you all about the wonders of the pipe clamp. I'm not joking, this is some serious clamp-tastic hardware that can be a game changer in your shop. And it goes without saying that you can never have too many clamps. So here are the basic parts of a pipe clamp. You get two pieces in a package, the sliding part and the Acme threaded clamping part. The clamping part has NPT threads that can be attached to pre-threaded steel pipe, while the non-clamping part uses a set of metal clutches to bite into the pipe. Either plain black pipe or the slightly more expensive galvanized pipe can be used. The pipe is not included and must be purchased separately, and that's actually a good thing, as you can purchase the pipe in the exact lengths you need. Most big box and plumbing supply stores carry pre-threaded half inch or three quarter inch pipe of various lengths. But as an added bonus, you can buy custom lengths and have them threaded in store. Here I am assembling a small 18 inch long three quarter inch galvanized pipe clamp. First, I install the sliding part. This has the clutches that will grab hold of the pipe. To move the sliding part, you squeeze the clutch pack against the body of the clamp and it releases the clutches. Second, I install the threaded clamping part. This has threads already cut into the clamp that screw into the pre-threaded pipe. One often overlooked benefit of pipe clamps is the feet on the clamp. This raises the work slightly and means that the clamp sits on the correct orientation for placing the work without holding the clamp upright. Another benefit is you can use unions to extend the length by adding two or more pipes together. However, you might need a pair of pipe wrenches to do this properly, and long lengths will lose clamping pressure due to the pipe bending slightly. When I first started researching pipe clamps a few years ago, every woodworking forum had some very heated debates about black pipe versus galvanized pipe. I've used both, and there are some issues with both. The black coating on the black pipe can rub off on the workpiece you are clamping. Galvanized pipe can discolor some wood and affect some finishes. I found a good solution to both of these issues. Use painter's tape on the pipe just on the surface where the workpiece will make contact. This actually has two benefits. First, it prevents any transfer from either black or galvanized pipe to the surface. And second, it prevents any glue squeeze out from sticking to the pipes. Another argument against galvanized pipe is how the clutch element won't properly engage on galvanized pipe, which I rate as plausible, but I have yet to see any evidence using my pipe clamps, and I haven't found any woodworkers who've had this issue. All my clamps use galvanized pipe, and the clutch can engage well enough that I can ruin the workpiece with the pressure. I guess it's possible that some manufacturers use a different galvanization process that prevents the clutch from engaging and biting into the metal. The other possibility is the clutch plates themselves were rounded or poorly manufactured. I bet you never thought pipe clamps could be so exciting. But wait, there's more. How do pipe clamps offer a good cost benefit? Well, it is related to the clamping pressure of pipe clamps. For their cost, they offer the highest clamping force per dollar available. To help explain what I mean, let me bring up one more debate in the woodworking community that will highlight the issue. The clamping pressure debate is fought constantly online, and I get it. For a new woodworker, it is better to use less clamping pressure as a default. Why? because when you are inexperienced, you just don't have a good feel for how much pressure you should apply and when. For example, if you are building a cabinet carcass with half-inch Baltic birch with a rabbit and a dado or a lap joint, and you 
want to glue and then clamp it all up. You really don't want to be applying thousands of PSI across the carcass. It would bow and snap the plywood. In this case, you're really just holding the joint together while the glue sets. You could probably just use large elastic bands or a ratchet strap to keep pressure on the joint. I've done this exact thing when I ran out of clamps on a big project. However, if you are making a thick dining room table out of multiple boards, edge glued, and trying to get a good glue bond, you really want to be using some serious pressure. Another example is gluing up a laminated Rubo top. You want all the pressure you can get. The reason for that is in the size of the glue area and the total force needed to apply the proper pressure to each joint for a good bond. One thing you can't do with all those fancy aluminum parallel clamps is put hundreds or thousands of pounds of pressure on a workpiece. Now you could go and purchase some nice I-beam style clamps, but those are going to cost you. Same with the stronger steel parallel clamps. They are very pricey too. I'm not saying every project needs this kind of pressure, but there are definitely instances where having that ability becomes very important. How much clamping pressure is enough? There is actually a recommendation from Dale Zimmerman of Franklin International, makers of tight bond woodworking glues. He recommends 100 to 150 pounds per square inch for clamping softwoods and between 175 and 200 pounds per square inch for hardwoods. The formula for equally distributing force from a clamp into the work is somewhat complicated. I recommend going to Jonathan Katz Moses's channel and watching his video, The Science Behind Clamps which I will link in the description below. However, the basic formula is to use the recommended PSI and multiply it by the surface area you are gluing. That will give you the total pressure required. Clamps exert pressure on a 45 degree angle from the point of contact in both directions. So if the board you are clamping is three inches wide, the clamp will exert force over a six inch wide area at the joint. It also means you should have a clamp at most every six inches. I've mocked up two sample glue ups to demonstrate how the clamp force is applied through the wood to the joint. Both examples will use two pine boards that are 24 inches long, three inches wide by one inch thick, edge glued together. Using the formula above, that would require 2400 PSI total. I've drawn the lines of force to show how the clamp pressure transmits through the wood. You can see that the clamps are evenly spaced six inches apart and that the force evenly covers the entire joint. Each clamp needs to apply 600 PSI. The second example shows the same boards but using only three clamps. Even though the clamps can apply 800 PSI, which would total the required 2400 PSI, the force is not evenly distributed to the glue joint. The small zigzag lines show where the gaps in pressure would occur. There are some additional special requirements for different cuts of wood, quarter sawn versus flat sawn. Some wood species require more force than the earlier basic guidelines. So, you are just starting out and you are trying to decide where to allocate your limited budget. Pipe clamps are an ideal solution. They certainly don't do everything perfectly, but they do many things well. They provide the pressure that a lot of projects really need to get a reliable and strong joint. They are versatile, cost-effective, and durable. I am aware that the cost of I-beam clamps and parallel clamps has come down significantly in the last few years, and pipe clamps aren't the only clamps you may need in your woodworking. I own a few parallel clamps and a lot of quick clamps for small, low-pressure glue-ups. I hope you found this informative and are having a great day. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you want to see more like it, consider subscribing. In the meantime, keep trying to make it better than it was.